we are too late, or not too late, but we are in the age. We need to, to really start to do a transition now uh, if um, our kids or grandkids can have a, a planet where they can ski or like climb or, or more important things like eat and drink water. Then I was thinking, what's my role there? Uh, what can I do? I, I'm not someone that have like the capacities as a scientist or as an engineer to investigate for the change. But um, yeah, I, I have a, a community uh, that it's, it's pretty big and, and I think like I can have some ideas and, and work with other people to, to create, to make some change. The, the biggest motivator, like nothing will motivate yourself more than like saying, okay, if I don't do it, I, I, I will die. And, and, and of course, like, yeah, the, the, the few times I has been probably fighting the most, it has been because of that, like, uh, because I say, okay, yeah, it's, it's no way out of here if I don't fight and, and then you, you just do it. Listen Stokely where we try to be involved To listen and learn for us all to evolve So welcome to you and welcome the world We hope you enjoy the stories to be told Welcome to Stokely, a podcast where we explore environmental conservation, our human mindset and adventure Each week we invite you into a conversation with people from all walks of life people who truly inspire us and set about contributing to a greater place for us all to call home. So please take some time to settle in for a conversation today with our host, Maya. Hi everyone and thank you for joining us for another episode of Stokely. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional custodians upon the lands where this podcast is created and listened to and I'd like to pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Today, our guest on Stokely needs a little introduction, and his name's Killian Jornet, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, endurance and mountain athlete the world has ever seen. I'm really grateful for Killian for taking the time to have a conversation with me, and we get to touch on a whole bunch of different things. His inception into the sport and the mountains, and also we get to touch on his love for the mountains, which has grown to be so much that he's created the Killian Jornet Foundation which strives to protect them, the wild places that they are and the places that give us so much life. So I'll leave it at that and I'd just like to ask you to send us some feedback um, after you have a listen and let us know what you think in regards to this podcast with Killian or any of the other ones previously. So I hope you're doing well and I really hope you enjoy this conversation and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Hey. Hey, Killian. How are you? Good, and you? Good, thanks, mate. Good. Hey, mate. So, hey, like, um, this this is like just a conversation more so than anything else. Hey, it's it's so funny having it like an, an interview like a, with with yourself because you've done them like so many times. But I'd rather <laughs> no, no, no. I'd rather just have like a chat, hey, because you know you're just a um, a great person to just to just have in this sport and let alone I think you know you there's so much about your personality that's just like super chill which is amazing and um and I'm sure you can you'd uh, appreciate just the conversation more so than an interview so if I don't just shoot questions at you all the time it's probably yeah don't don't feel like that's strange um for this this kind no of a problem. podcast that's nice yeah sweet actually one thing I wanted to ask because for me, it was like a, it was quite a big thing, but for, um, you know, like the trail running world, it probably wasn't that big of news in, in some regards, but you know, the, the team in, um, the Nepali team that summited K2, um, in winter for the first time, that was, I was reading a little bit into that when it happened back in, I think it was January. That's a, that was a massive effort, eh? Yeah, it's it's great and it's great in different aspects because um, first uh, the Nepali climbers they has been like uh, helping uh, occidental climbers to to do a lot of the of the ascents. So uh, to be them that they they close the last eight thousand meters summit climbing winter and on a effort team 
Uh, that, that was good, and, and it's good because it's inspiring a lot of uh, Nepali climbers that they don't see going to mountains only as a as a job to do, as like to as a guide or as a porter, but as an opportunity for them to to do their art, like to to climb by themselves, to do their roads, and and uh, I think that's uh, that's why it's good. Of course, in when. Uh, if you see like the evolution of uh, of alpinism in terms of a style, is not um, a breaking uh, ascent on that. Like uh, it's uh, with uh, uh, oxygen expedition, uh, um, uh, expedition style. So I think it's. Uh, but that's part of the progression. I think in the next years it will be more climbs on on without oxygen and alpine style. And uh, I think uh, they, they open an uh, opportunity uh, not only for uh, yeah for for all the climbers from Nepal and from other places to get inspired by what they did. Do you think like why do you think it is the situation that it is with say Nepali climbers, although they're incredible at doing it, they just you know it isn't um, it isn't seen as kind of like a profession to climb solo, but it's more like seen as a profession to guide other people, say is, is like a porter or something. Do you think it's just the lack of, say, sponsorship or interest in promoting them? Mm, I, I wouldn't say it's that. I, I think it's it just um, they started climbing mountains later than, than in Europe. And in Europe, it happened the same, like... Uh, in the 1800 when Mont Blanc was climbed for the first time, uh, it was uh, um, because uh, some aristocrats, they paid the local uh, to to guide them to the summit. And, and then like they, the locals started to guide uh, different people, rich people to, to the summits. And after a um, hundred years, they started, these locals, they started to climb their own roads and they started to do uh, activities by their own, so it's it's an evolution, and and it's happening the same in Nepal that um, when they started climbing because uh, they, they saw a economic opportunity, but uh, it's been in the last years it's been more Nepali climbers that um, first they they are guiding on like they are full guys they are uh, UIJM guides, and then like uh, you see climbers like uh, Tenji that has been climbing as a as a partner with Ulistek in the past and they has been partnering with uh, the best uh, uh, alpinists in the world and then they they start to do their own activities so it, we are living that moment that they are um, empowering themselves o- on the climbing activities and that's that's great and i think of course they are they will make uh, the, the future ascents in the himalayas because they are there every day so they are there when the conditions are good and they have the capacity they know th- those mountains better than any of other the other climbers yeah yeah it's gonna yeah it's gonna be so like as you say it's gonna be so cool to see that happen um and also like to be aware of it you know to see to see history unfolding and to be aware of it i think is a is a pretty special thing because you know like quite often things happen and you kind of they only really become highlighted later on down the road as like this like quite a, a significant thing so it's um yeah, it'd be rad to see how it develops. Is you like your connection to Nepal is would you say that's that's like a, a pretty special connection to you compared to, you know, all the other places you've traveled in the world or mm, yeah, probably. And yeah, because I, I go back there. Like uh it's it's a place where I, I get back all the time and it's it's these places where you get back all the time. It's 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 part of it's another room of my house <laughs> and home like for me it's yeah. like i don't have this feeling of home as as uh, like my house here in norway or like where i was born in the pyrenees but like home for me it's different places around the world where i feel like confident comfortable and uh, and for sure like some of the ballets in nepal are are some of these rooms of of my home that's so cool. What a way to look at it. What, what, um, with, uh, with future projects, does the Nepal play a big part, you think? Yeah, I think like Nepal and Karakoram, um, 
it's they are beautiful mountains they are high so they provide a physical challenge uh, that it's uh, it's incredible so i yeah i, I think I, I will go back there more and more and uh, especially like in the l- l- last years like i i want to keep doing like uh, trail running and ski mountaineering competitions but my motivation is not there like a hundred percent because it's it's kind of i feel that I will not experience new things there and uh, and it's more on, on mountaineering and, and when it goes to mountaineering projects it's a lot of things to do in Europe, uh, in America but you always go to the Himalayas and to the Karakoram because it's the challenge is just higher, it's, it's bigger because uh, in addition of the technical difficulties that you can put it's always the altitude so it's, uh, it's just uh, it's just harder, so that's the thing as a sportsman, what you want to find is a challenge, and, and it just delivers that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, um, it's a pretty incredible, like, pretty incredible playground, for lack of a better term, to, to get out there and explore. Um, your, your playground, like, and, and where you're at in Norway, the lack of altitude doesn't like really affect how how you prepare that much like because you're going to these huge like these seven thousand eight thousand meter peaks um but you don't definitely don't have that in norway hey and how do you how do you kind of match that match that altitude yeah not training? at all yeah like here the, the higher summits are like uh, 1800 900 meters so it's it's pretty low and of course it affects on the way that you need to climatize a bit longer um so instead of like taking uh three weeks maybe you take four weeks of acclimatizing so uh, i i think it's the only thing like i i, I now when i go down to the alps I, I feel that i can run up to to mont blanc the first day and i don't feel like any any problem or anything so it feels natural but uh but sure that when you go i would say higher than six thousand meters then it probably takes one week longer the climatization yeah it's it's um yeah it, i think it's it's pretty epic you know like you look at some of the work that um let's say like uh adrian ballinger does with the climatization and, and getting from places like tahoe and straight into the the high mountain peaks to do guiding and things like that and also ascents and it's just like a whole new world of exploration with regards to how does the the physical body cope with with altitude training um and it's pretty exciting i think to to see those limits do you do you feel like you know like is it just a physical thing to prepare for altitude or does do you do anything specific with your mental game when it when it comes to altitude training no it's it's mostly physical it's just to get get used to to be there like to because mentally like i think it's experience of course like you need to know what's why yeah what you will experience there because if you think it will just be hard uh, you don't get it like uh, when you are there like it's it's not just harder it's just like everything in your body is like slowing down and you don't know why because um, you can feel good but uh, you do two steps and you need to stop and, and, and you don't understand why and you are moving so slow and even the brain like it's it's moving slow when when take a, taking a decision so it's everything that goes in another pace it's 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 just different so you need to understand that and and that that's probably the experience so I would say the first expeditions are important to to understand what what's altitude and why that really uh, like you feel really really shitty like shape all the time and and that's normal it's not that you are in very bad shape it's just that that it's the altitude yeah 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 wow hey i guess it's like a, a period of accepting that hey like you just accept that you're you're gonna feel that way for for as long as you you put yourself in those environments i'd love to like chat to you because we were on this this call the other day with um with a, a bunch of pretty experienced crew and they um we we kind of had the topic of mentors 
and how important mentors are in, in the roles that they play um, through your development. Do you see, are you, do you work with anyone as being their mentor at the moment? No, I, I, I have had mentors um, and since I started the sport uh, and they, they played a huge role on, on who am I today. And that goes from um, when I started competition, um, like Jordi Canals, how he shaped me into the athlete I was, but also with this vision on, on mountaineering, not only focusing on, uh, on, the, on the competition. And then if I climb today in the Himalayas, the way I do is because the first expedition I did, it was with uh, Jordi Tozes and Jordi Colomines that they told me how it was. They, and then I discovered that, no, that was not normal, but uh, that's how they introduced me to, to climbing in Himalaya. So that's, yeah, that, that was my normal for me. And, um, and climbing with uh, many other guys out there, uh, they have been mentoring me. And, and it's, it's the only way, I think, to, to become, I think, any sportsman, but especially alpinism, where it's, it's so wild, like the, the capacities and the things that you need to, to prepare and to, to train, uh, that uh, mentor, to have mentors and to, to spend time with them, to climb with them, to, to practice activities with them. It's, it just, um, it's, it's necessary. It's not another way, I would say. Um, and I don't know, like I, I think I, I inspire um, some guys. And so it's, it's like a chain, you know, we, we get like, a, we get um, knowledge and inspiration from, from some guys and we, we give that inspiration and that knowledge to other people so I think it's I'm more probably in the inspiring people than on the mentoring people uh, hopefully in the future uh, I will be able to to work closely with uh, some other athletes to be more uh, more mentoring than than just inspiring yeah what do you, what do you mean when when you say that you started to realize it wasn't normal the way you were taught like what things were happening that made you think, oh, hang on, that's not, that's actually not normal. Well, like the first time, like uh, I went to Himalayas, it was uh, on February uh, 2013. And we had, I had a 40 liter backpack for all the expedition, all the gear, like uh, to climb a high, a, a very high mountain. And we were three and we, we went from the last village and, and we were like going to that mountain that was like 100 kilometers from there, just carrying these small backpacks. Um, one guy was leaving the day before because he thought that he was lower. He slept in the middle of a snowstorm. Our communication system was, if in the second day, uh, in the morning, we catch you in the middle of like glaciers and things, it means that everything is good and we continue. If you don't see us in the second day, you just come back. So no satellite phone, no any kind of communication, nothing. Food, we had like a, one portion of like soup for the three of us per every day. That was our nutrition because we needed to go, we needed to go far so we could not carry a lot of gear. Uh, we were the only ones in the mountain. It was... Uh, it was pretty punky, like it was, it was a pretty punky experience, but that's how it is. Like if you climb the mountain, you climb it because, uh, because you are able to do it. It's not because you put like a elevator or, a, or like technology to climb it. So I think it was, that's how they told me that it's not about climbing the mountain. It's about how you climb it, the mountain. And, um, and that was it. We didn't summit that, uh, that time we, we climbed to 7,500 meters and, and we needed to turn around because uh, it was conditions were imperfect to continue, but I, I, it's one of my best experiences in the, in the mountain in general, everywhere, because I learned so much and, and it was so pure. Like it was just like three guys with what they can carry on the backpack. And that's all, it's, it's not, it's easy like, uh, um, one of the Jordi Tozas, he was saying, you should be able to, to explain, to, to do the logistics of an expedition in a, in a, um, in a post-it. So in a small page, 
if it goes longer than that, is that uh, it's too much. So logistics should keep very simple. So it's the it's the human that climbed the mountains and not the technology that climbs it. Wow, that is so so awesome. Mate, that that to me is just like the pure sport of of human in mountain hey? and nothing um, else. Well, like we have a very bucolic vision too because you think that it's it's beautiful and that but then like you see a, like you see a lot of shit too like it's i think it's like sports is it's just a reflection of humanity so it's like humanity it's it has good it has bad it has like a um uh it has everything so when you see like any sport it can be like running uh, is something like uh, purer than running. Like you just grab a, a pair of shoes or even you can like, you don't need even the pair of shoes. Like you can run like naked and you just move and you transport yourself. So that's, that's so pure. But of course, from there to like, uh, you see like uh, doping cases and like uh, uh, things. So it's, it's like, it's the same sport. It's it's different visions. So it's it's just a reflection of humanity, and and that comes to running, that comes to football, and that comes to alpinism. Yeah. So do you do you um, like how do you feel about the the way that say like trail running at the moment reflects the way we are as a community of trail runners? Do you feel like there's there's certain values that are and maybe being promoted that that you don't really agree with more so. Well, it's it's hard to say because trail running it's it's a big sport. It's um, and it has a lot of different tribes inside, and it's it has different um, concepts. Like uh, trail running is like sky running. It's it's Trofeo Kima, but it's also like um, um, Western States or Lake Sohoma. So if these two um, activities are the same sport. It's it's very different. Uh, one is like scrambling, and the other is more close to road running, and that's just the the activity. And probably uh, that means that um, that uh, what if you ask people what start running, probably you will have very different answers. Uh, so probably then the the values they they are associated not not only with the activity but uh, with uh, those persons and uh, some will be more about the competition some will be more about uh, the 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 relation with nature some more about uh, the the adrenaline uh, uh, so I, I think it's more about that and of course like one sport when it's growing it means that it's um, it's uh, different branches that they they grow and uh, and that has a uh, I think it has only good things because it's not that one um, overlays the other. It's just uh, expanding. So uh, I believe that if people find that uh, now it can be more like a, uh, a circus because it's uh, it's media and because it's uh, it's uh, more sponsoring and things like that, uh, nobody is, is forcing these people to go there. Like it's a lot of off races. It's a lot of small races that keep and, and that's beautiful. I think that one thing that it's beautiful about trail running is that the sport it's growing uh, on a very organic way. That is not like a, let's say um, yeah, it's not like only growing in one direction, but uh, more is like a races and circuits that they look more professional and it's like live streamings and things like that. That it's incredible because it's it's reaching a lot of people and. And for young guys that they are super competitive, like it's it's what you want. You want to go there where it's competition and, and to show up. But at the same time, like it's races that they are of races with just like 20, 30, 40 participants that it's growing. So I, I believe that's the beauty, of, yeah, the beauty of this sport that it's, it's just uh, growing on every possible direction and, and that every per practitioner will find where is their place and and it's not because your place it's it's what you feel uh your place it means that the other places are bad they are just different mm. yeah cuz you um you just mentioned uh like you mentioned the unfortunate i guess element of doping 
in sport as being one of the more on the uglier side of the scale because you've you've definitely raced against some people that have failed drug tests and and things like that in the past how do how do you feel about that when you find out that these people you've competed against have like failed a drug test um well like um I, I think you, I don't feel angry at them, um, but I feel more like a, I did my race, I, I know how I did, and I, I, I know what's the value of the performance. And even if this guy was dope, like a, a, that shouldn't take my performance out. It's, of course, when it comes like um, some situations where like, a, people lost uh, like uh, contracts or like uh, um, price money, things like that. It can be more difficult, uh, especially if, uh, if uh, you're in a situation like uh, that it's, it's fragile economically um, and, and, and anger can come. And I remember like the first time I, I, I figured out like some uh, um, of the guys in the ski mountaineering where like it was some doping cases, like you were like, yeah, I, I was kind of angry because it's like uh, these guys shouldn't be here. And, and I think like uh, um, we should be better at anti-doping. We should be better on on uh, finding the, the policies that they, um, yeah, that that is just cleaner the sport. And, and that comes, uh, I think it comes a lot in education too. It comes a lot in education of, of young athletes. It comes a lot in education on on what's the consequences of doping, what's the, what's the sport, like what's the, why we practice the sport. Um, and, and that's, I think that's the only way kind of in long term, because in short term, like we will keep catching like uh, some of the dopers, but uh, you will never catch all of them because uh, um, you do, you cannot do like a, a test every day in your life. Uh, uh, you cannot, uh, prevent that the test like uh, they they catch every of the of the medications and things and so i think we need to to get to the stage where is um yeah where people don't know because they believe uh but we are very far from there so i think um until there yeah it's it's important to blow these uh these policies and 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 do more tests on the other side like do more tests it means that it's they, they are not cheap like it's expensive to do tests so like it's many people complaining like why they don't do more tests it's it's because it's very expensive too for the organizations so i think it's uh we need to yeah we need to find the, the good ways to to do more testing uh and and the athletes should should make also more statements and and do more by themselves to be proactive on that i mean like what how do you change someone's and i don't want to say how do you change someone's kind of mindset around doping but you know i guess are you saying that like we need to we should try and like educate them on finding different value in the sport as opposed to like just winning you know yeah like i think that's the first thing of it like why it's a podium like the physically like why it's always like a podium where like the the first one is in a, in a superior position than the second one and then the third one is is like um, and so you are saying this guy is good and this is bad and, and yeah. that that's at the beginning of everything like uh, it's it's because you you want to be better you want to be and, and better on on n- not on yourself like you want to feel better you you want to to be in the top and uh, it, it 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 goes back to capitalism i think at the end of the day uh, it's it's how is the structure of the society. Like we live in a society where they tell you that you need to earn more money, where they tell you that you need to, to be in a higher position in your, um, in your job and, and, and you need to escalate to this position like, uh, and you need to fight to this position. It's like, that's the value of life. Uh, it, it's that to, to be in that position, to, to escalate higher, what's higher, um, why I'm escalating higher. Um, uh, is this really making me happy? Is this really making me like feeling some things that I want to feel? Like, uh, uh, is this really the job, the, the, the work I want to do? So uh, we don't have time to put ourselves those questions. So I think it's important to just, um, yeah, and, but 
as I said, like it's it's not a problem of a sport, it's a problem of society. And uh, so we have a lot of job to do. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, I think it goes all back to, to that. And it comes back as well to like pressure from sponsorship and things like that too, you know, like standing on the podium is seen to be a bigger achievement than, I don't know, like just just standing on a finish line knowing that in yourself you you really just had the best day you could have and that was a huge achievement in, in some ways. Do you like how – because I remember listening to some of the, the ways you spoke about your coaches when you were growing up and what they – and the way they kind of taught you to, to not – it's not always about the competition and, and the result, like – it was a lot about how you feel and how you felt during races and, and training and competition. What are the things that you got taught when you were younger that kind of allowed you to, yeah, to not focus on the, the podiums all the time and have a different relationship with your development in, in the sports that you were, you were in? I think it's two things that uh, they were like always telling us when training or like um, when I entered to the technification center, like uh, my coach uh, and, and the technicians in there, they were always like focusing a lot on two things. One is like you need to study, like sport. Uh, you will never like, or you, you don't mm, like, you will not live from sport. Like you will not make a living. You will not. Uh, so you need to practice the sport because you love it because it's fun, because you meet friends, because you can push yourself, but you cannot practice sport to make a living. Uh, and I think that's not only because the 99% of the persons that they practice sport as a kid, they will not make a living, but also on the mindset is like, okay, I practice sport because it gives me something like spiritually or like a socially that it's so big that uh, I, I don't need to think that I need to practice that because, because I need to make a living. And I think if you get that when you are a kid, it, it goes back. Even if now that I'm, I'm making a living from the sport, for me, I don't make a living from racing, racing or, or like going to train. It's, it's my passion. I make a living from like the social media or like uh, interviews or like developing gear with the sponsors. But for like sport, uh, it's... It's passion. Like I have never thought about. I'm a professional sportsman. No, I'm. Uh, I, I'm an amateur because I'm amateur. It comes from from uh, a verb like it's it's love. So that that's the first uh, big um, thing that they told us. And the second one, it was to never think about results. Like uh, I remember, like we were always focusing on training, on progressing. So the goal was to progress, to be better on like doing the transitions, to be better on physically in the downhills and the uphills on, on all these aspects on racing too, like on racing better as on a more smart and, and all that. But, um, I never thought I want to do this position in the race, even my coach, like, and the first time I became a world champion in ski mountaineering, uh, I, uh, it just happened. Like we hadn't planned, like, uh, I want to, to be world champion. And, and I think that's the, it's also like, we are focusing so much on, I want to became won that race or, 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 or be professional or mm, do these results that, uh, we, we cannot focus on what matters. That is the way. And that's the training. It's, it's the day by day. The results they they may arrive one day and and it's just one day, but the where it really happens is in the every morning every training session, and if you are focusing on on other things that might happen um, eventually uh you are losing all that so it's it's necessary to not think about the results to achieve them yeah wow well, uh, do you um you know like within within that process did you did you struggle with that at all, or was that did that feel natural to you to you know, like not focus on results? Was that a hard thing for you to to um, build into your way of practice? 
Mm, not really, because it was the only thing I, I knew, like it was just to focus on progressing. And, and even today, I think like today I am much more happy when I see progression on a training than when I win a race. And I think it's because uh, that's what I was taught. So um, no, I think uh, it never, like, of course, like uh, when you, uh, when you expect a result on a race um, and, and something happened, like uh, I, I, uh, I was angry sometimes, like uh, I remember at one time at the, it was the, the first uh, European Championship, I, I participated as an as a, um, elite, so as a senior. Uh, I was leading and in the first downhill I break uh, my binding and I was so, so angry. Uh, and of course, like I, I, I was expecting to do a good result on that race, to, to win or, or to the podium, and then it was like, uh, holy shit, what? Why that? But during the training, it never happened to the mind. Like it was just like, okay, focus on training. I focus on training. I focus on training. So it's only the day of the race that you are allowed to, to think about the result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that makes it. Hey, gives you that must give you some pretty good fire, fire in the belly when you're when you're like needing to go that hundred percent limit on, in a race day. Hey. Have you, you know, like, um, you know, I've, I've, I'm so, so, so grateful for being able to I, um, have met you in person and been able to spend time with you in person. I think a lot of people find it incredible that you are the person that you are, I think. Um, and I mean that in the most respectful way because, you know, like there is social media and there's a lot of, you know, like we were saying before, you know, like normally if, if you're the best in the world at what you do, right, there's, there can be a lot of ego attached to it and there can be a lot of, you know, a lot of um, other, other bullshit that, that is not necessary, I believe, you know, and that's my personal belief, but you definitely don't come with that. And it's, it's so nice to be able to explain to people when they say, oh, you know, have you, have you ever met Killian I'm like yeah I have and the most incredible thing about him is he's just so so void of ego and he's such a like a kind of like a gentle and nice person and it's not a show like it's not a show at all it's like that's just who he is I believe at the core and it's awesome to be able to 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 show people or just to introduce people to that concept that you can be one of the like the greatest in the world at what you do but you don't have to be a an egotistical a-hole about it what i'm getting around to is like um when i first met you in colorado we, we went on that mission up mount eolus uh, eliolus um, yeah. that, that fourteen thousand, which was um that fourteen thousand um foot peak which was <laughs> such a mission of a day i couldn't believe it um, but then after that, you, you ran hard rock like five days later or something. And you, that was the time you dislocated your shoulder and ran half the race in a sling. Um, what are the moments that stand out for you as, as like, was that one of the moments that stand out for you as like really pushing your absolute limit or are there other moments that you found in the mountains doing, you know, like more alpinism expeditions that you've found your, your like, maximum limit hmm ah that's hard um well it's it's different like because when you are on a race it's always a control environment like you can push your limits as far as you want like even if you pass out it will be someone there like that will pick you so you can really push to to your limits when you are in in those races or, or, or like training or like things like that because you have always like a safety net. While when you are in the mountains, you don't have that. Like you know that if you are pushing too far, like uh, uh, nobody will go to pick you. So it's it's very different how you manage this. Um, not only the risk, but like uh, the the effort and, and how far you can push everything. The pain, the the capacities, the the metabolism, everything. But tell that also because the, the environment in the mountain is so extreme 
And and sometimes, and I think you were saying that I don't have ego, and I have. I think I I have a and, and a lot because uh, first to to compete, it's it's also to to put a lot of effort into yourself. Uh, yeah, so it's it's probably like prioritizing things that they are for yourself than 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 to do for others. And also, I, I would say when you go to the mountains. It's some ego there because, like, sometimes you take decisions that they are not the more reasonable, because you want to feel something, you want to have a feeling, you want to to experience uh, something, and and that's uh, it might be the ego that that it's it's pushing me to to take that decision, and so like I remember like sometimes like you get to these extreme conditions and you go above what you thought that they were your limits because survival. Like survival is the is the fast like the is the the more the, the biggest motivator. Like nothing will motivate yourself more than like saying, okay, if I don't do it, I I, I will die. And and <laughs> and of course, like yeah, the 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 few times I has been probably fighting the most, it has been because of that. Like uh, because I say, okay, yeah, it's it's no way out of here if I don't fight, and and then you you just do it. Give us give us an example of when you when you were in that um, situation. Well, like I would say, it's it's different ones. Like um, I, I remember one time, like I was going out for a training here at home, and um, I had that line that I saw uh, on a summit for a long time, and it was like, oh, that might be possible to climb one day. And then that day I was training. I say, okay, maybe today is the day. And and I started climbing. It's it was a it's a ice and mix climbing road, and I had just like my ice axes and my crampons with me, so I didn't have a rope or any gear. So it was like when I started and after, one hundred meters of steep ice, it was like, okay, now it's it's only possible to exit up, and it was like uh, I didn't know how it how it was. So so it was like I was uh, opening the road at the same time, like I was. Uh, uh, discovering new ground and uh, so it was like every step like I was thinking okay I really hope I don't find like a harder move higher up because I don't know if I will be able to do it but uh, I, I, I know that I cannot don't climb here so it was like every time like that just like hoping that it gets easier and then when you find a harder step just like putting all the resources you have like technically physically to to overpass it so that was um, that was kind of yeah. I, I really pushed my my resources there, um, mentally mostly like to to avoid the fear, to not panic, uh, and just like to continue and be able to to be on the flow at the same time. Um, then like uh, I think uh, in um, in Himalaya this first expedition that I, I told like of course there we were pushing the limits on everything like on on food on like. Water. I remember the, when we went back from the attempt, like uh, it was uh, like we needed to go back like uh, 100 kilometers on like climbing a glacier and go back to the village. And I remember the night I was just uh, hitting the tent. So the the yeah the the, the ice that is inside the tent from our um, breathing was falling. So I was drinking some water from there. And and the day after it was like okay no we just leave from here and I uh, I remember when I saw the first river like maybe twelve thirteen fifteen hours uh, yeah from from starting skiing so probably like I don't know more than twenty four hours since drinking the last time I was just like jumping like with all my face into the into the river so yeah that probably was pushing the limit and it was because like in a race you can say okay I will not take any water. And you don't do it, but at a moment, like you say, okay, that's stupid. I'm doing. You just take a glass and you drink. In the mountain, it's not your decision. It's just that it's not water available. So, it's it's things like that. And then, of course, like when when you are in an avalanche coat or like when you fall, physically, you you discover that you you can be strong, like on 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 fighting against that element. So probably it's yeah, it's it's yeah, it's mostly that. that but that, that's a very bad example. Like I. I those are very, very bad examples yeah. because I always tell and, and I try to practice by myself to always find my limits on a very uh, comfortable environment 
where I can really push this specific thing and like to do these experiments on like foot or on like uh, pace or on like uh, technical capacities or on whatever it is on, on a place where where it's uh, where you can really really push that limit so then when you go to mountains you know where is that limit and, and then you can say okay if if I miss like one meal it's not a big problem or I know that I have this strength and all these kind of things so to practice on, on control environments and then in the mountains, like always have a gap of, uh, of margin for, for safety. Yeah, I suppose like it's a, it's a really good point hey, that I say that you're void of ego, but then you, you kind of switch that back and say that you, you probably do have some sort of ego. Um, I guess, I guess for sure, you know, survival, if, if you, if you don't care about yourself in many regards or like you don't identify as, someone then yeah the the point of survival doesn't really mean anything and then you probably wouldn't stretch to uh to make sure that it's um that you do survive in some situations it's it's kind of like you know like some like buddhist teachings that talk about you know we suffer as humans because we crave things or we have aversion to things but you know craving things you need to crave things at the end of the day or else you wouldn't go and eat breakfast or or yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't drink and or you wouldn't do anything you would just sit there and turn into dust because you have no desire to do anything so i suppose uh yeah i suppose when i say you're void of ego you you you've probably got a better understanding of your own ego which i appreciate you sharing but you know you're just a, you're very good person when it comes to how much you manage your ego in a social situation let's just put it that way <laughs> I, yeah, thanks man. <laughs> um, I wanted to I was listening to an interview that you did um pretty recently actually with um with uh Mario Frioli in the morning shakeout and I really enjoyed a, a, a moment that you shared when you said um like the good thing about history is that we forget and, and history is really long and it doesn't matter if you win a world championship or you break a record because in a few years, no one will remember. And the thing that really stuck out for me about that, like what you said then, is you said that in a few years, no one will remember and that's great because then you are free to do what you want to do and not to think I should do that to be remembered like that. And when when you said that i just thought that's that's amazing that you know being free of other people's opinion or being free of the history books like is a big thing or is a is a the notion that like the thought that you are free of the history books allows you to then be free within yourself can you like where did you how did you come to that conclusion and that situ like that thought process in within yourself? Mm. I, I think it it came from from being in the mountains and 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 you feel alone, you feel insignificant. Uh, and it's that, and it's like okay, it's. I will not survive because I'm who I am. I will not survive because I have followers. I will not survive because I will be in the history books or because I am world champion. It's like, you are nothing. Like, uh, and, and you take the perspective, like you look uh, uh, what you, what's your life, uh, what's your life's achievements in, in terms of like human um, uh, history. It's, it's nothing. Like uh, one guy that uh, is is like uh, like running there, like in 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 uh, billions of hi uh, human history, or and and then like you take like human history in in terms of like uh, the the earth history, like uh, we we are nothing. So it's it's like uh, okay, like uh, we we shouldn't like under uh, or overestimate uh, who we are and, and what we can achieve in this this world. And and that's that that can sound like pessimistic, like saying, okay, you know, let's let's do nothing uh, because it doesn't matter. But it's the it's the opposite, because I think we we have so many chains. Uh, we we have changed from like uh, um, 
social change, like uh, political change, like uh, um, or, or family and, and like uh, and, and and the fears that we have inside. So we, we have already like a lot of change that they they shape uh, our freedom and. Um, and, and if we just add more on those, it's more pressure. It is the opposite. Like I think it's more like more you liberate uh, from those uh, chains, like more free and more like uh, yeah, you just feel like release on like okay, I I I don't need to care about that. I just need to do what I feel is good, and 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 that's uh, and that's it. Like it's and and then you don't. I think you need to be taking seriously the consequences of of your acts uh, for yourself and for like uh, for for what you care the the ones you care and and and, and that's different for every person but uh, but at the end of the day is like uh, it's there it's it's not further like uh, I think it's yeah looking yeah thinking that uh, it's too important, it, it just reduces the possibilities of the things you can do. So, you know, like at the very end of the day, what is success going to look like for you? Being happy. It's just so simple, like just being happy. Yeah. Mm. It brings us to you know, discussing about the, um, the foundation that you set up because I was so grateful to see that it, it was created and the work that you're doing there, um, which I'll get you to explain a little bit more about um, because it really did seem like a step in, say, a direction to um, work in alignment with a cause that you felt greatly about, which is not... I guess something that is, you know, about yourself in a way, but it is about yourself because you're a human on this earth. Um, and it's, you know, the Killian John a foundation is about, you know, protecting some places that you love. Um, c- can you like take us back to the, when did you first have this thought of, oh, I should, I, you know, creating a foundation. When did that first pop into your mind? It didn't happen like overnight. Um, it's mostly that uh, for the last years, uh, when going back to the last question, like uh, being happy, it's, it's a very easy question to, or a, a very easy sentence, but how to be happy, it's, it's much harder to achieve. And to achieve happiness, it's, it's um, a lot of things that can be like uh, from the personal achievements, for the personal growth, from... Um, uh, the relations uh, with your loved ones uh, and it's also I think with the connection with the earth and and with the yeah with uh, feeling feeling that you are proud of uh, of your um, y- your time on earth I would say and that you and especially if you you look to the next generations is like uh, you want them to be able to enjoy um, the mountains, uh, in my case, or, or just like to have the possibility to have a planet that, uh, that they can enjoy the same as, as we have. So, um, it's, um, it's back on that, like saying, okay. And a few years ago, starting to think we, we are too late or not too late, but we are in the age we need to, to really start to do a transition now. Uh, if um, uh, our kids, our grandkids, uh, yeah, can have a, a planet where they can ski or like climb or, or more important things like eat and drink water. Um, so um, it's, uh, and then I was thinking, what's my role there? Uh, what can I do? Uh, I, I'm not someone that have like the, capacities as a scientist or as, or as an engineer to to investigate to for the change but uh, I I have um, yeah I, I have a, a community uh, that it's it's pretty big and, and I think like I can um, 
have some ideas and, and work with other people to, to create, to make some change. And it was like, what can, can it be the best way to do it? And at the beginning, you, like, you start like, yeah, just posting on social media about it. But that's, it's a moment that advocating, it wasn't enough. Like, uh, it's good to advocate and it's important to advocate because we need to have more people uh, aware about um, uh, all the problems that we are facing. But it's important to act too. Uh, it's important to do things. And um, I was just like looking the different options, like to to be more involved with different organizations and associations, to create an association, to create a, a, a foundation, to create a... And at the end, uh, even if I, I really hate like uh, to put my name on the highlight, like uh, the Killian Junet Foundation is something that it was like, really it should have that name like it's it's uh, it's my, like i have enough of my name um but uh but it was it, it's the good way i think to 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 really reach more people it was the good way to really have a, a bigger impact so um we get to the conclusion that it was the best tool to do the things uh, i wanted to do and um and that's it. It's it's uh, that was the moment. Say okay, I want to that, and then like uh, it was the start to figure the, the time to figure out how to do it, and uh, and and yeah, it, it didn't happen the day and then the day after we launched the foundation. But uh, I, I think I'm I'm someone that likes to think. I, I'm not like a impulsive. I, I'm more like a reflective person. So it was it, it has been taking some time. Of reflection, and I think uh, probably um, when my or daughter was born, it was kind of also a, a speeder on that because you see more like the reality, like say, okay, it's yeah, you, you see more for real the next generation what it looks like and uh, and and what you can do. So it was kind of a yeah, it was a bit of a of an accelerator of uh, of doing that too. Yeah, how's how's it been becoming a father and and having that responsibility in your life now? Well, I I think you always learn like a lot, and you are never ready, and and you just take step by step, and you do mistakes, and you you learn, and and it's it's just amazing. Like every day, like uh, you are growing together because uh, it's like. Uh, uh, yeah, she's just telling us so many things and the, she's uh, teaching us uh, to be patient. She's teaching us to 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 get amazed about the small things again and, and all that. And it's just like beautiful to to embrace this growing and, and to be, yeah, it's it's great. Like it's, it's just beautiful. Like it's, they are so, yeah, it's, it's like, they have everything in front of them and, 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 and to be so pure on a way, like it's, it's so cool, like to, to be living that and, and just to share experiences, to share like uh, our love for nature and mountains and, and try to, to, to take, uh, to take her on, on the journey. Beautiful, mate. That's so nice to hear. I don't know if you realize, Kelly, but like ever since I was growing up, my, my nickname's Madge and they spell it M-A-J. And so, so quite often I get sent, <laughs> like I get screenshots. You, from... you, 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 you got a, a very, very strong uh, impression. We, Emily and I really got a, a very strong uh, um, <laughs> impact uh, of meeting you. So <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty nice to hear. <laughs> I get these like screenshots that say, Madge, Madge and I went skiing today. And it's like <laughs> you with, with May on the, on the back in the backpack. And, and I get these screenshots saying, oh, hey, how was your ski with Killian this morning? <laughs> it's so ridiculous, but uh, fine. it's pretty funny. So the foundation, how's it been received? You know, I, I know that we were we had a call last week, a really amazing call with Dakota and Dakota Dakota Jones. That is, he's doing his work with the the footprints camps and and he's he's putting his you know f- skin in the game, so to speak, and in, in making an impact to to help protect the the wild places that we that we love. Um, which was an amazing call, and and you joined as a, as a spe- guest speaker on that. Um, 
And, you know, like you mentioned that in this world, you can, you can receive criticism for doing good things and you can receive criticism for doing bad things. You just, someone's always got a bone to pick with you. Um, so, I mean, ha- has it been well received your, um, the foundation and, and what's the, have, have you received a lot of like um, interest in people wanting to support it? And do you think it's, it's a really um, going to play a big part in the future? Yeah, the, we have received like a lot of um, good, um, good beeps and, and, and good inputs. And I think the reception has been, has been very good. Um, and that's um, and mostly, I think it's, it just to be together, like with other people to do things, as, as you said, like, um, if you do something, you will always uh, get criticism because, uh, uh, yeah. And especially like of my, my lifestyle, like, of course, like it's, it's been a lot of traveling and, uh, and things like that, but, but, uh, I think we need to, to just, uh, start with doing steps to become better. And, and that's, uh, that's the important thing first to accept, uh, yeah, or, or, or shadows and or lights and, and then like work from there. But, uh, the reception has been amazing. Like it's been a lot of uh, people from different, yeah, from industry, from science, from communication that they has been like, uh, getting in touch of the, with the foundation and, and that's our goal. Like our goal is to, to make community and to, to be able to take each one's capacities to build things. And, and that's, that's how we want to work like having people with different, very different capacities and be able to, to put those ideas together, uh, to, to go further. And that's, um, yeah. And, and that's been, that's been great because we, we have get, uh, yeah. Inputs from, from, yeah. People all around the world and, and people from very, very different, um, backgrounds. Mm, amazing. Hey, I feel like, um, you know, like a, a group of, of people and myself, we, we gathered together, um, at the beginning of last year and we really wanted to create something that would allow trail runners specifically, and then runners as a whole community to, to be able to put their emotions and their feelings about nature into action to help protect it. Because, I like we kind of felt and we identified that there was a lot of emotion and and desire for people to help protect the environment, especially trails and mountains and just landscapes that we, we recreate in and we love. Um, But there wasn't many like ways to do it in our community to turn that emotion into action. And so we created a, a, um, an organization called for wild places. And it's, it's amazing that to be able to create a tool for people to, to action their emotions, so to speak. Um, do you, do you feel like, how do you see the trail running community? Do you feel like they are a bun- like a, a community of people that, that do have the natural world's health in their best interest? I think in general, yes. Um, it's people that is more connected to nature and it's people that uh, want to protect it or preserve it, but uh, uh, we don't know how to do it yet. Uh, I I was doing for one project with the foundation, I was reading a study uh, that uh, they did in Germany in in 2018 and it was uh, looking the the footprint of uh, a lot of different sports. And, um, and on the, on the interviews with the people, like, uh, they saw that all the other sports practitioners, like, uh, um, trail runners, uh, surfers, um, hikers, they were the ones with a higher, um, awareness about the, the climate problems, about the biodiversity problems. But, uh, on the same time, they were the ones that they had a, a bigger uh, carbon footprint uh, related to their activities. So, um, yes, the, the, 
the awareness is there, but we don't have the tools uh, to act for it yet. And I think that's uh, that's not um, an individual uh, answer. Like it's not. Uh, it's a lot about what you can do as an individual, but it's not only that. I think it's all the industry, it's all the the system that uh, need to change. But we are also part of this change on on, on many other ways. So uh, I think it's it's good. We are living a good moment on 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 activism and on um, on environment because it's it's moving. And as you said, like uh, you you create this movement and it's people joining and and it's uh, big movements. Uh, on politics and it's big movements on activism and it's small clubs that they do uh, small things and, and, and bigger organizations that do bigger things. But all together, it's, uh, it's going to a moment that uh, things are happening and people that uh, had this, uh, this uh, conscience uh, about uh, uh, they want to do something, now they know what they can do, I think, more and more. And that's the important thing, to, to be more not aware of the problems, but uh, to have the knowledge of what are those solutions. Mm. I've spoken a lot with, um, uh, you know, many people in the space of, you know, sports activism. And one of the common things that keeps coming up is a lot of athletes who have a following uh, are somewhat... Um, you know, like afraid to put their neck out there and to say like, you know, to try and encourage their community to to do something different as individuals to help make a small step to create bigger change in the way we we exist in this world to help protect our environment, um, natural environments and also, you know, the environments of our homes and whatnot. How do you like, what would your advice be to people who feel really passionate about it but aren't they don't feel confident to speak out about it or don't feel you know they feel like they might upset too many people by saying the truth about how they feel about climate change and what it means to protect it uh, it's just to to do it just to to say it and i think at the end it's is to tell what you feel um and that's that's uh what's in important also for social media like to just tell what you feel but um of course like all these all the messages that they are or political or that they are um uh, as uh, like all the climate and things like that that people can uh tell uh, this guy is uh he's uh, an hypocrite or or things like that an athlete will always be a bit afraid to post it because he will get criticism. But at the end of the day, like, who cares? Like, uh, if it's like, let's say, like, you post something and you get, like, uh, 100 comments, on those 100 comments, like, uh, 90 are um, guys that they they are criticizing, but with no fundamentals, they are just, like, uh, uh, kind of insulting or whatever. But then you have like 10 comments of people that they are saying, okay, I, I never thought like that, I, I will see. Uh, I don't care about the 90, I, I care about the 10 that they, that they might change uh, and they might uh, see, uh, they will go to look for more research or, or whatever. So it's how it is. Like, uh, uh, it, and that it, it goes to what the athlete it's it's able to to hold I think on that and and some they might be yeah more sensitive some not some they might be more attached to social media some less so it, it's hard to to tell what an athlete should do uh, because it's very personal but I would say like just don't make social media more important than it is so uh, sometimes we think that it's it's everything and, and yeah, no, it's, it's not real. Like, or it really is people there. It's, it's a part of our life, but it's, it's, it's not everything. And, and we should really keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really good point, mate. And hundred percent. You know, like content is such a big game, isn't it? Like creating content and whatnot. What, what project stands out to you as, as being like, one that you remember the most as, as just being a really fun project to to put together and make happen. Huh. It has been a lot. Like it has been like 
racing and doing things like for for 20 years <laughs> um uh, i don't know it's it's fun to see like the beginning it was so so funny it was like kind of monty python like if you compare to now it was just like uh yeah <laughs> when it's put like okay i remember the first um uh even before like uh uh, the, the, the Killian's Quest and all that like I remember the, when I was 16 years old that uh, I was doing like the FKT on, on a, a, a 4,000 meter peak in the in the in the Alps and and there it was uh, like of course at that point it was not social media all that but just like to 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 try to to find some pictures from like the, the climbers that they were in the mountain the, that same day and show me like a kid like running with a, a ski suite and and just to try to put those images together to, to 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 share to the sponsors. Uh, that was like it was when I look now to the images, it was horrible, but uh, but uh, it it was part of of the fun. And and lately, like uh, um, I think like this year with the COVID, we we got a lot of very um, um, visual and imaginative stuff. Like it has been so. Uh, it has been a step uh, more on like creativity, I think, on 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 doing things because uh, I remember during the lockdowns, like people doing this these crazy videos, like on editing and things like that, and and it's uh, uh, I think it's it's very fun. We did one video of like uh, or tools like playing outside with uh, with a paraglider uh, um, and with uh, with um, a snowboarder. And we were like just filming like ourselves, like looking for or like gear on the house and the gear was like playing out in the mountains during the lockdown. So things just like projects like that, they are they are fun to make for for the fun of it. And um, of course, then it's like projects in the mountains that they are fun because very different things, uh, more personal or more like because it's it just you, you live uh, funny mom moments or things like that. But uh I think on on creativity. I think this year it's been it's been kind of amazing. Killian, are you allowed to tell us about any secret projects you might have coming up? Uh, well, I'm not allowed to tell you, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, like it's well, like uh, uh, this year I want to focus on an expedition for the first half of the year. So I'm I'm training for that now. The plan is to go to to the Himalayas on the spring and and see what what's possible to do there. I have different ideas on mind. Um, and then, like, I, I really don't know for the second half of the year. Um, I will see when I come back from the expedition, like, I, I want to do some running and racing, but I really don't know how it will come back. I don't know how it will be the motivation, if it will be more for, like, doing some, like, flatish stuff like last year, or if it will be to do more some, like, trail races or, like, short or long. Uh, right now, I have no idea. I'm, like, focusing on expedition and then when I come back, like, let's see the, the rest of the year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, I just want to ask you one more thing, mate. And that was, um, you've, you've put out a number of books now, like you've been like kind of, I guess, like contributing to a number of books and also you've put out a, a number of, of books yourself. Actually, I've got like, um, above the clouds here. Um, okay. Thank, thanks Sam for let, borrowing that book. Um, like, is writing, like, going through the process of, of creating a book to you, like, what is that process like, you know? Is it, is it, um, because it's, it's got to be, I assume, like, somewhat of an emotional journey to, to go through some of these, these accounts again. Yeah, I think writing it's, is to revisit things and is to, to try to take perspective on, on, on things that you've done or on thoughts, um, so it's 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 mostly that like you need to find the time for it uh, to find time where you 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 have not the stress of, of finishing, so you can revisit these these ideas and these thoughts and and these uh, yeah these events, um, and I'm grateful for expeditions for that because when you go to to big mountains like you have. Uh, a lot of time so it's it's good to to try to put those ideas uh together but yeah it's something that i i like in a way or it can be drawing too like drawing or or, or writing 
is activities that that you need to be there. You cannot be doing other things at the same time. So it's just these spaces of um, of concentration and 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 being focusing in one thing that they are they they are good. I think just and it, it makes me feel good doing it and and. Um, and if it can give something to to other persons, that it's a plus. But uh, first, I think for for me, it's, uh, it's just a, a good space to to be. Yeah, uh, it's nice. Yeah, it's a. I, I appreciate that answer. It's a. It's cool to it's cool to hear. Um, all right, man. Well, you know, I just yeah, as I mentioned to you before we started like chatting and recording, I guess is. Um, it's so interesting being like having the opportunity to, to chat to you on a, on a podcast for, you know, like a, a container of time, because I feel like there's probably not, you've probably answered every single question that could ever come up in the world. And, um, and so in that regard, I think, you know, it's probably pretty easy for you to just say no thanks to another, another interview or, you know, a conversation, but, um, yeah, I just want to say I appreciate you taking the time and um, and going through the process again of of answering numerous things. Um, but I, you know, I always continue to learn from people like yourself, so I, I really appreciate your time and uh, yeah, and, and having a chat. It's good to catch up too. No, yeah, thank you very much. It's uh, it's a pleasure. It's it's always cool to talk with you and and to and then like especially like in 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 the in the world we live with like the. You need to make an impression on seven seconds. That's that's what it is. Like it's that's not real life. Like life, it's it's time, it's conversation. So it's it's great to have uh, to have those. Yeah, you know, it's one thing about the whole COVID situation and restriction of travel that's made me realize that I I really really miss like the mountain communities that we find ourselves in when we travel to to different races and and spend time in, you know, different parts of the world, like be it Chamonix or, or elsewhere in the Alps. It I like, I really miss that community and that just ability to hang out, I suppose. It, it's, it's been a real bummer. Yeah. We realize like, uh, and, and especially we think we has been realizing like how, yeah, things that we, we probably didn't thought they were important. And, and now we, we see it. So we just like, uh, is different and, and we, we need to appreciate like everything we we have and we had because it's uh we take for granted a lot of things that they are not and, and just i think during this period it's just like we we realize that much more mm. yeah absolutely hey yeah well i think uh i think that's a pretty good a pretty good way to end it hey final final words of advice i i do remember you you saying that like there's like two questions you hate getting asked and one of them's like what's the most common question you get asked and the other one is like do you have anything more to add <laughs> exactly I, I will not answer any of those two <laughs> <laughs> because normally normally i finish like an into like a conversation like interview with like oh is there anything else you'd like to add and <laughs> so um we're not going to do it today all right so um you've had your chance no to yeah You've had your chance to to pour your heart out, Killian, and um and now the time is over. So I again, mate, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, yeah, take care, uh, every one of you, and yeah, have fun outdoors. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining in for our conversation today with Killian. I really hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, please keep well, look after yourselves, and please drop us a line with any feedback you have about Stokely. We really look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot and see you soon.